Hi, welcome to Have Roots, Will Travel. My name is Lisa Elvin Staltari, and I am your tour guide um, through Quebec as we travel the highways and byways, the cities and small towns and villages of Quebec virtually. And I am a genealogist and a passionate traveler, and my hope with this series is to be able to give you, the genealogist and avid history buff, um, information so that when and if you do travel, you will have more information. And if you're currently doing research, this will also illuminate and give you some more um, information, if you will, about the location. And as you know, in genealogy, it really is location, location, location. So let's get traveling. We have finally finished traveling through Drummondville, which we did in the first five or six series, uh, episodes of this series. And now about 20 minutes outside of, of Drummondville, traveling on the Otter Route 55, you can get to South Durham. I prefer to take the old Highway 143. Both roads lead you there, but I've always preferred the slower approach. Um, and until I really became interested in genealogy years ago, I only knew South Durham as a place where one of my dearest friends had lived. But over the years, I've realized just how deep my roots were in this community. Members of my family were living and farming here from the 1840s on. Although its population is small, it's about 1,008 according to the last census. The amount of cemeteries of both English and French origin attests to the fact that it once held a much more prominent uh, role than at the current time. It was founded as a township in 1792 and it was named for Durham, England. Um, a lot of people tend to believe that it was named for Lord Durham, but Lord Durham was actually born in 1792 and only became Governor General in about 1838, so it's just kind of a coincidence, if you will. It was largely settled by English-speaking inhabitants of both Irish and Scottish origin. Let's give you. Let's have a look at South Durham, the historical timeline. Before I begin, let me just uh, point out that I'll be listing the website for the municipality, which is a really nice website, and it's www.durham-sud.com, and I'll be posting that in the links to the show. Uh, let's begin. 1792, as we spoke about, the township was named Durham after the town in England by Loyalists. 1802, William Cross and his wife, Fenella Ladding, who were both Loyalists, settled here. 1815 to 1820, more Loyalists came to settle. Remember, the War of 1812, and this is where the soldiers were coming. 1862, the Westland Methodist Church was established. In 1863, the first Catholic church was erected in the parish of St. Frigence. Um, it was the parish, actually, that was established. The church came later. 1872, St. James Anglican was demolished. It was built in 1872, demolished in 1897, and then rebuilt. The stained glass windows are from St. Paul's Church in Lavenir. And in 1925, the United Church of South Durham was established and took over the Westland Methodist Church building. Now, for the historic homes, this is um, the oldest home in the area, can be found on the main street, Rue Principale. It dates from 18. Um, 30. There are many examples of these kinds of historic homes, particularly along Shemay Muni. For more information, please visit um, the, the page and it's um, Google Translate if you need it, and it's on Patrimoine Dromond, and I will be posting a link to that. I wanted to include the 1851 census. There are other censuses available even earlier, but this one was interesting because it gives you some idea of people were living here. Um, they have, you know, there, there were Stevens and then there was a Charpentier. So um, we also have Lester's. For some reason, there's an Elvin that I don't know about, and that's my main name. So I'll have to check that out. 
Um, we have Hall, we have Wilkie. Um, and so it really is amazing to see, you know, you can see the millwright, farmer, so, uh, lawyer. You can begin to see that the community was developing and it's always interesting to make it real. It's not just a bunch of dates. Now, while I was researching uh, for this, you know, video, I came across a lovely B&B called Le Gite Pars et Vallon. Although I've not personally seen, you know, I've not gone in there, I just thought I would throw that in there because I just thought it was really kind of neat uh, to actually be able to stay there if you're doing some research. Obviously, there's not that many hotels. I don't think there are any hotels in South Durham. So I think that that would be a really, really great um, kind of point of uh, place that you could you could rest your hat on, if you will, while you were doing some of the research that you might need. There's a historic bridge. There's one historic bridge found in this area at the corner of Chemin Mooney and Route 116. After three deaths in 1874 through 1876, the citizens of South Durham demanded and the village paid for it. Uh, it was built by the Grand Trunk Railroad and it passes over the railroad tracks. It's kind of a cool thing. And now let's turn to the churches and cemeteries. You know that in genealogy, it's all about the churches and the cemeteries. So let's start with the St. Francis Church, which is the Roman Catholic Church that was built in 1872. And it was named for the spiritual leader um, named Frugels de Fontaine, who lent his house for the first religious meetings. He was a, quite a famous fellow as well, was a postmaster, was the mayor, uh, very influential in the development of South Durham. Uh, so until a church could be built, they kind of met at his house. And we have the St. Frangel Cemetery. I have provided all the links for you to um, have a look at, you know, all whether it's find a grave, interment.net, there's a couple more. And I made sure to be able, so that you can research that before you go. The first St. James Church was constructed in 1872, where it was torn down and rebuilt in 1897. Um, it was that designated as a historical site in 2012. The St. James Cemetery is a fairly large and well-maintained um, graveyard. And again, I've listed all kinds of information in the notes. And then we have the United Church, which is the, the Wesleyan, uh, the Wesleyan Methodist Church, which in 1925 became the United Church. And then we have information on the South Durham United Church Cemetery as well in the show notes. So this is will give you enough to do at least a full day of looking at the cemeteries um, and finding your people if you can. I also, before I go, I wanted to make sure to let you know about a couple of resources that are really invaluable to get to know more of the area. Um, these are two books, Richmond Now and Then and Roads to Richmond, written by Nick Fonda. They're both available on Amazon. And although they deal with Richmond, South Durham is part of that area, if you will, and um, he includes some things that are just really amazing and two of the best books I've written, I've, I've read about um, in this area, that I've read in, about this area. Truly, truly remarkable. And he just happens to have been um, my high school English teacher, so obviously I'm prone to liking him, um, but I definitely, definitely recommend this as a resource. And the next uh, resource I would recommend is the Richmond County Historical Society. If you have questions or want to more information about the area, please go to their website. I'll be listing it. They helped me enormously a few years ago. I not only took a tour of their museum um, that they had there, small, it was a small museum, but really, really well done. And uh, they allowed me to go through information. I had emailed them before, asked them about what I was looking for. They found the information for me and we broke through a brick wall that I never thought possible. 
So I am forever in their debt. So I would definitely, definitely urge you to look um, into their resources as well. And with that, we will say goodbye for now. I will wish you happy travels in genealogy and travel. And um, I will say au revoir until we meet again.